Hi, Tamal. Thanks for coming on the show again. Thank you. Thank you. This week's Bankers Trust was a bit complicated. Right. So just to simplify things and for our audience, just to explain to them, why are bank loans rated and why do bank loans need rating? I thought they do their own credit risk assessment and all. But what is this rating that happens? Yeah, indeed, banks do uh, assess the credit risk. They have their own risk management, credit and uh, underwriting, so on and so forth. But uh, that actually goes into the pricing of the loan. Um, for the riskier the borrower, the higher the price. Uh, but this bank loan rating came into existence because of the Basel Committee existence. And the bank loan rating has a bearing on the capital requirement. You know the, the so-called capital adequacy ratio. Yeah. For every 100 rupee worth of a loan, a bank needs to set aside 9 rupee worth of yes. capital. Now, it depends on the, the higher the rating, the higher the rating, the lesser the capital required. Like uh, if for a triple rated company, they don't uh, need to set aside 9 rupees. Mm -hmm. Only for triple B, they, they need to set aside 9 rupees. And then if it's triple B minus, it becomes 150% risk weightage, meaning 13.5 rupees they need to risk, uh, they need to set aside. So the the lower the rating, and of course, if I am a, if I am an in corporate entity and I have a great bank loan rating, I, that also gives me a handle to bargain with banks uh, to bring down the interest rate. Now, you talk about bank loan rating and bank loan rating with credit enhancement. Yeah. What is the difference there? No, essentially, you know that CE uh, suffix that's been used is. Uh, uh, the entities they get comfort later or the guarantees by their group companies or the parent. So once the parent gives you a backing, so you get that CE rating. And with CE, uh, your rating goes up because um, you know that you beat the Tatas and Bidlas and the yeah. large corporate houses. If a group company goes mm -hmm. and the mother company, the parent gives the credit guarantee. Uh, like in case of any default, I will step in and I'll take care of it. Now, now this is very interesting because you mentioned RBI and SEBI both in the article, right? Yeah. So who yeah. is the regulator there? Because that's a bit confusing there, whether it's RBI or SEBI. No, there's no confusion actually. Globally, the rators are primarily regulated by the capital market regulator. Mm -hmm. but yeah, you know, internationally, that's the trend. In here also, uh, SEBI is the primary regulator. And I would say Reserve Bank of India is a secondary regulator. Reserve Bank of New India comes in for the bank loan ratings. Whereas, you know, as an entity, uh, corp uh, corporations, they also have other instruments, uh, NCDs, uh, mm -hmm. bonds, etc. Yeah. where the SEBI comes. So SEBI is the primary regulator. If you see all the master circular, all the guidance, etc., it's done by SEBI. Where is Reserve Bank of whereas Reserve Bank of India actually directly reaches out to the rating agencies and tells them what's to be done or what's not to be done. You mentioned the guidelines. So what has changed in the guidelines? One, two, how will it impact the sector? Because you talk about capital requirements. So would banks' capital requirements change after October twenty first, as you mentioned? Yeah, this is you know the guideline. Actually, it's a basically a very strict now. Probably Reserve Bank of India has come out in stances where the comfort letter or the guarantees given by the parent, it's not enforceable. We are not, we don't know. I, I am not privy to any such information. So now it RBI makes it watertight. It's the responsibility of the credit rating agency that you have to see every aspect that indeed this is enforceable. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the case. Now, if that happens, my presumption is this, uh, all the triple rated com the universal triple rated companies, um, well, there could be instances where the raters will find out no, uh, that these guarantees are not enforceable. So they need to bring them by a few notches. And if this indeed happens, so certainly the bank's um, uh, capital requirement will go up. And other, other things can happen. Say, I am a corporate entity. I have a bank loan rating as well as uh, I have some NCDs and other yeah. debt instruments in the bond, in, a, in, a, in the form of bond or something like that. Now, if the raters follow RBI um, very strictly, which is very strict, now give me one sort of rating for my bank loan. And if they are, and, and I may have another sort of rating 
another gradation of rating for my um, other data instruments. So there could be confusion, but it's at the end of the day, um, how the raters are treating it. Uh, for all you know, if I'm a rating agency, I may follow the same norm. That like RBI is telling me to be extremely strict. Checks and balances are extremely strict as far as Bangalore rating is concerned. I will follow the same norm for your uh, NCDs and bonds also. So mm -hmm. in that case, there is no anomaly. But if a rater chooses no, I'll follow the uh, little soft approach uh, in relative term. So then there could be anomalies. A, sa a same entity can have different ratings for bank loan as well as uh, bonds. When you talk about this, does this mean that the liability of the rating agency would increase? They can't say that this was just an opinion. Does that mean that? Absolutely, absolutely. Rating agencies, uh, um, uh, I not call it real liability, the responsibility will increase manifold. They need to, you know, they need to work more like an auditor. Uh, earlier, you know, it was um, uh, many cases of the question of trust. They have to get it deep into it. So more, more. I mean, I mean, in some cases, they, they, they may need even foreign audit. And you see, there is a difference uh, when, in in case of a, a bond issuer, yeah. even a one day default, they can they can track because the trustees some of they get to know. Yes. But in case of bank loans, they cannot track. You know, it takes it takes time for them to actually get into this because um, there is a mechanism within the Reserve Bank of India where the banks exchange information, but this is not available to you and me and even to rating agencies. Okay. Uh, so th that's that's the problem. Let's move on to the other side of the spectrum, the companies. You yeah. talk about this non-cooperation part of companies which don't want to get rated or who have to get rated but don't just to escape yeah. scrutiny. Now, what is the solution there? Would they come into the ambit after these October 21 changes or not? No, this is a very, I mean, I mean I'm mean, i glad that you pointed out. In the rating universe, a large number of companies, they are non-cooperative, they call it. I mean, you you are a company, I rated you, but you, uh, uh, I would like you to continue the rating, which you need to, but you are just not giving me information. So how do I... The, the, you, you belong to that non uh, uh, non cooperative company. You know, how, how, why do you do this? And um, why does a bank also entertain such an entity? There you need to <laughs> look at it. You know, up to triple B, the bank's requirement is uh, is a hundred percent risk weight. Yes. Now, anything below triple B is bank requirement is hundred and fifty percent risk weightage. Meaning, instead of nine rupees, I am a bank, I need to set aside 13.5 rupees. Yeah. But an unrated entity, or which those kind of non cooperative entities whose rating is not available, for them is 100% rating. You know, so it's, it's less. So, it's a lot so of somebody who, would, who, feel, uh, who feel certain that I would get down to triple B minus. And uh, I, I uh, so that the risk weightage will go up, and my pricing of loan also will go up. So why let's not cooperate? Let's get into the bracket of unrated entities, etc. So my understanding is this: uh, this is one issue. It needs to be sorted out, and both the regulators are, have been talking on this. But meanwhile, the number of cases have been have been have been rising. Yeah. And one more, you are not asking me, uh, but I am on my own, I am saying this, uh, is this, you know, uh, unlike the others, like a mutual fund and banks and all, there are a, even the microfinance entities, there are SROs, self-regulated yeah. self organizations. So there's a close coordination, IBA for banks, mm -hmm. MFIN and Southern for microfinance entities, MFI for MFIs, but for rating agencies, uh, there is no SRO. I, I believe there is some attempt uh, to put in place an SRO, but uh, certain entities, certain raters who are owned by overseas entities, they are not part of it. So it's virtually, it's non-functional. Mm -hmm. So one of the way of um, sorting all these things out is greater cooperation among SEBI, RBI, as well as rating agencies through an SRO, which at this point of time happening because there is no SRO. Thank you. Thanks a lot for your time this week. We hope to talk to you again soon. Thank you. Thank you.
If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn. I am the blue of the limitless sky. I am the inspiration that lets success soar high. I will achieve. Trusted Bank, SBI, the banker to every Indian.